The objective of today's training video is to describe and visualize distributions of mental health related 911 calls in New York City using two programs, ArcGIS and Geoda. In this video, we will answer whether mental health related 911 calls are randomly distributed across New York City or not by conducting an Exploratory Spatial Data Analysis, or ESDA for short, and using global and local Moran's eye statistics. Exploratory Spatial Data Analysis is a subset of exploratory data analysis that focuses on uncovering interesting spatial data patterns for various social health indicators, such as infant mortality rates or low birth weight rates. By interesting spatial data patterns, we mean identifying areas that have relatively high or low values of social health indicators relative to neighboring areas. We may want to know whether health indicators, let's say infant mortality rates, are randomly distributed across areas. And if not, in statistical terms, we might want to know whether they are local spatial clusters or local spatial outliers. Areas with high infant mortality rates surrounded by other areas with high infant mortality rates, and areas with low infant mortality rates surrounded by other areas with low infant mortality rates. Those are called spatial clusters. Areas with high infant mortality rates surrounded by areas with low infant mortality rates, and areas with low infant mortality rates surrounded by areas with high infant mortality rates. Those are called spatial outliers. For purposes of this video, we will focus on identifying spatial clusters and outliers of mental health related 911 calls. For our analysis, we will use the New York City Police Department, or NYPD, Calls for Service dataset for 2022. This dataset documents police activities requested by the public, as well as police activities self initiated by the NYPD. NYPD uses radio codes to indicate the nature of a call. One radio code is 54E. The 54 refers to an ambulance case, and the E refers to an emotional disturbance. We will analyze the calls that are classified as 54E, which can be conceived as mental health related calls. The data set includes the X and Y coordinates of the mid block of the street segment where the event happened. So, we have point data for mental health related calls. First, we will open a shape file that includes a map showing the United Hospital Fund's 42 neighborhoods in New York City. These neighborhoods are defined by the United Hospital Fund, and each neighborhood consists of multiple adjacent zip codes. This is a common geographic boundary often used in public health research for New York City. We will display our point data for 54 E calls on the UHF map. The data set contains 345,599 54 E calls in 2022. Let's first display the coordinates of 54 E calls in 2022 on the map. We remove all information other than the unique ID, in this case, the column labeled CAD event ID and keep X and Y points in the dataset to reduce the chances of getting an error message. Click Add Data on the menu bar, then find the 2022 54E call dataset and click the Add button. Now right click on the table and select Display XY Data. The X field should be Longitude and the Y field should be Latitude. Also, make sure you have the right coordinate system. The coordinate system is often written in the codebook and data dictionary. Here, we are using GCS North American 1983. Then hit the OK button. You can ignore a message table does not have object ID field for now. We have turned an Excel table into a temporary point layer. You can see points for the 54 E calls on the UHF map, but we're not done yet. This is a temporary visualization of the Excel table in ArcMap. It is not yet a shapefile that you can pull into another map. Later, we need to pull these points into the UHF map and calculate the number of 54E calls in each neighborhood. 
So we need to save the data as a shapefile. To save the data as a shapefile, there's a few more steps. Right click on the point layer, then navigate to data and select export data. Then click the folder icon to specify where to save the new file. A notification window will pop up and ask if you want to add the exported data to the map. Click yes and you will then see a new layer on your map. Remove the original CSV table by right clicking those layers and selecting remove. Now we have shapefiles that display the coordinates of 54 E calls. Next, we will count the number of point features, the 54 E calls, that are contained in each polygon, the UHF neighborhoods. To count the number of mental health related calls within a neighborhood, we will use the spatial join tool in ArcGIS map. Click Geo Processing and then click Search for Tools. Then type Spatial Join and click Spatial Join Analysis. Target features should be a polygon, the UHF map, and join features should be the point data, the 2022-54 eCalls. We will use Completely Contains as a match option. We might lose a few data points, but that will not affect our analysis for the purposes of this video. You will see a temporary file that shows the number of 54 eCalls in each neighborhood. Again, this is just a temporary file. If you wish to create a shapefile, you need to export data and create a shapefile. In a separate Excel file, we will document the rate of 54 eCalls in each neighborhood, calculated by the total number of 54 eCalls for the year 2022, divided by the population, and multiplied by 1,000 to calculate 54 e-call rates per 1,000 population. We will import this Excel file into ArcMap and create a shapefile. We will join this shapefile to the UHF neighborhood shapefile. Right-click on the UHF neighborhood shapefile, select Joins and Relates, and then select Joins. We have the UHF ID on both files, so we can use those fields for joining these two files. Click the OK button. Now we have a shapefile that contains 54 e-call rates for each neighborhood. We will export this file so we can use it for ESDA. Geoda is a free and open source software tool. Geoda is known for ESDA analysis, but you can also conduct basic spatial regression analysis with this tool. Let's first import our data. Depending on the version you use, Connect to Data Source may pop up. If not, go to File, then New, then Esri Shapefile. Select the shapefile we have just created and select Open. The map will pop up when it's finished. In Geoda, we can create a simple quantile map displaying the 54E call rates. In the file bar, go to Map, then Quantile Map, then 8. Then select the variable in the dialog and hit OK. Now we get another small map of the quantiles. We can see that neighborhoods in the Bronx, including Crotona and Highbridge, have high 54E call rates. Also, we can see that Chelsea has high rates. ESDA begins with defining the spatial relationship, which is what constitutes being a neighbor. We can define neighbors to be touching only if they have a shared border, or we may want to define neighbors in terms of how close they are. A spatial weight matrix formally sets criteria to define closeness in space. Geoda includes useful tools to create spatial weights and explore them. In the File menu, go to Tools, then Weight Manager, then Create. In this case, we'll select UHF ID in the dropdown as the file ID variable. Next, we have to select the type of matrix. In the contiguity matrix, if we have five neighbors, we assume that they all have the same spatial relationship and that other non-neighbors do not have any influence. So it is all or nothing. Queen and Rooks are terms used in Geoda derived from an analogy 
to a chessboard, where the rook neighbors would be the four locations to the north, south, east, and west, and the queen neighbors would also include the four corner elements, or total of eight neighbors. In the distance matrix, if we have five neighbors, we assume that each neighbor has a slightly different influence. The choice between these two will depend on what makes the most sense for your research question and data. It is always a good idea to review previous studies to see how people define and justify their spatial weight matrix on the data you're interested in. For this video, we will select Queen Contiguity as the weight type. Click Create and save the file as queen.gal. You will then see a pop-up that says the file was successfully created. Click OK for the success pop-up and then click the close button in the weights file creation dialog. The resulting weight file is simply a text file, so you can open it up in any text editor and see its format. Here are the first five lines of the file we have just created. The first line is a special header that defines the number of units with no neighbors. We see zero, so all the units have at least one neighbor. It also includes the total number of units in this file. In this case, there's 42. The next line shows that UHF ID 101 has three neighbors, 103, 105, and 301. The next line shows that UHF ID 102 has two neighbors, 103 and 104. One of the useful features in Geoda is that all windows are interactive. So if you want to see which neighborhoods have five neighbors, you can click on the histogram and see what happens in the map in the table. The spatial weight matrix that we just created is needed when we want to assess Moran's I statistic. In the file menu bar, select the space and then click univariate local Moran's I. In the variable setting dialog box that pops up, make sure you have your queen weights selected, check the set as significance map, cluster map, and Moran scatter plot, and then hit OK. We are interested in whether the spatial patterns of 54 E calls are compatible with a notion of randomness. We refer to this as testing for global association. Global Moran's I statistic is a measure of overall clustering and is assessed by means of a test of a null hypothesis of random location. The rejection of the null hypothesis suggests that there is a non-random spatial pattern or spatial structure in our data. In a Moran's I scatter plot, the slope of the line shown is the global Moran's I coefficient, which in this case is 0.211. This means that there is a spatial dependence of 54 E calls. To see whether this spatial dependence is statistically significant, we can use the permutation approach and get pseudo significance values. Here, we click 999 permutations. Put simply, we take the observed data values and randomly assign them to spatial locations, then calculate Moran's I. We will do this randomization process 999 times. The p-value is under 0.05, so we can reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we can say that the 54 E calls are not randomly distributed across New York City. Tests for the presence of global spatial autocorrelation indicate overall clustering. Yet, we might want to know where the clusters or outliers are located. Local indicators of spatial autocorrelation, or LISA, help us to find the spatial clusters and outliers. A map showing locations with significant local Moran statistics, classified by type of spatial correlation, is referred to as a LISA cluster map. The LISA cluster map shows significant pairs of locations based on 999 permutations. In interpreting the pairs, the first variable is the local value. The second is the neighbor value. So a low high pair means it is a location of low 54E call rates 
next to a location of high 54 E. coli rates. For example, UHF ID 101 Riverdale has low 54 E. coli rates, but is surrounded by neighborhoods with high 54 E. coli rates. When we look at the quantile map, we can see that this is true. A high-low pair means it is a location of high 54 E. coli rates next to a location of low 54 E. coli rates. In this instance, we don't have any neighborhoods that can be classified as high-low. In any case, these high-low and low-high associations are referred to as local spatial outliers, as we learned earlier in this video. On the other hand, there are local clusters. A high-high neighborhood means that the neighborhood has high 54 E. call rates and its neighbors also have high 54 E. call rates. These are referred to as superclusters. We found two superclusters of 54 E. calls. As we saw in the quantile map, they are located in the Bronx. We can also see that there are four low-low neighborhoods in Staten Island and one low-low neighborhood in Lower Manhattan. These neighborhoods in Staten Island and Lower Manhattan had relatively low 54 E. call rates and are also surrounded by neighborhoods with low 54 E. call rates. Global and local Moran's eye statistics can be applied to any aerial data, census tracts level data, or neighborhood level data, to discover patterns of spatial association, clusters, or hotspots. Crime rates, infant mortality rates, Medicaid enrollment rates, and many other socio-health indicators can be analyzed to discover their spatial patterns. ESDA, using Moran's eye statistic, is an effective way to start your analysis and identify potential spatial associations between the distribution of a phenomenon and other factors. In this video, we found that 54 E. calls are clustered in the Bronx. These findings allow us to examine the characteristics of those areas and conduct further research to identify specific socio-health indicators that might be associated with 54 E. calls. ESDA helps us to start exploring those potential contributing factors, which we can use for regression and other analyses in future studies. 